gonna sit in it. So I wanna kinda do a reading slash knitting vlog, except that I'm realizing I don't have a lot of knitting to share, but I'm gonna talk about why. Um, so let's start with the reading. So what have I been reading? I wanna, I, um, I wanna talk about reading, I guess. Um, I realized, I honestly don't know if I've already said this on a vlog, so I might be repeating myself if you've watched more than one video of mine, but I realized a few, a few days before the end of 2021, like sometime in December, I realized that I had allowed the chaos of the last four or five years um, to interfere with something that is very special to me. I had allowed the chaos after the 2016 election or uh, in the 2016 election moving through um, the Trump administration and all of that. I had allowed the chaos of all of that to interfere with my ability to read in a way that I'm not okay with. And I came to the conclusion at the end of 2021 that I refuse to allow something I love so much to be taken from me in that way. Um, I realized this because I was looking at my Goodreads reading challenge and I went to set my reading challenge. In the last couple of years, I've set that challenge at 50 books and I've made it a couple of years. One year, I think I only read 35. Um, which is so low for me because if you look, if I look back at my reading challenges on Goodreads and then prior to that, look at my reading journals before I started using Good Goodreads for that purpose, I was reading upwards of a hundred books a year, usually around a hundred, 115 books a year. And then the 2016 election happened and this horrific president came into power and all these things were going on and all of my anxiety was going up and I stopped reading. And this really defiant, angry part of myself um, kind of surfaced at the end of December. And I started realizing that I don't want to give that to that to the world. I don't want to give up that part of myself. I don't want to give up that peace that reading brings me. I don't want to allow the negative aspects of the world to impact my reading in that way. So this year I've committed to 75 books. Um, and at the moment on my Goodreads, I'm actually two books ahead on that. So I'm doing good um, on my reading challenges. I'm two books ahead on that. So, um, so I wanna kind of start doing a monthly uh, recap of what I've read that month, talk about some of the books that mean the most to me, that sort of thing. Um, so I have my little reading journal with some stickers on it, of course, you can get the therapy. Um, so I have my reading journal. I did a couple of reading spread, reading journal spreads, which I'll, I'll, uh, maybe show some of those at like the end of this video. And I want to talk about what I read in January. When the year um, began, I had just finished reading The Strangers. I read in December, uh, by Margaret Peterson Haddix and... In January, I read the, the Messengers and the Deceivers, which is the second and third in that trilogy. I devoured them. Um, they're middle grade, so they don't take long, first of all, but also they're just so good. Um, they're, the thing, they, are, they, they feed off of that thing that, that Netflix streaming mentality of something short with a cliffhanger. Each chapter is really short with a cliffhanger. Um, so bas the basic premise, if you haven't heard of them um, in The Strangers, is that three children wake up one morning and on the news, there is news that three children who look similar to them have exactly their same names and birth dates, but live in a different state. I think the children that live in Ohio and these other children that are on the news live in um, maybe Arizona, um, but these other children were kidnapped. And... Then their mom starts acting really weird. She tells them that after school, they're, a friend of hers is gonna pick them up from school. Um, and then she just kind of disappears. And they, these three children spend the remainder of the book trying to figure out what's going on. Um, 
at no point in this book did I actually know what was going on, which is a real um, impressive feat for a middle grade fiction novel. I was super into that. I was super into the fact that I had no clue what was happening. Part of that being that what I just told you for a summary is literally all the information I had going into it. I'd seen a couple of booktubers talking about it. Um, I try not to look too deeply into reviews and such, which is ironic since I write them so often, but I try not to look too deeply into book reviews and such because I don't like spoilers. Um, but this book just like The Messengers, the first one, I mean the, nope, the first one, the, uh, the Strangers just completely captivated me. And when I actually figured out what was going on, um, I was like, oh, super impressive. I didn't know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna give it away, but I didn't know just how far out of our reality this book was. Like I, I didn't know how to predict that. So I didn't know what to expect, which I loved. I thought that was super cool. Um, and then, I, so in January I devoured The Deceivers and the Messengers, which is the second and third in the series. I feel like The Strangers, the first of the series, is the most, is the strongest of the three, for sure. Um, and it, like a lot of trilogies, it kind of goes downhill from there, which is really sad. I still enjoyed them. I still devoured them. I still wanted to know what was going to happen in them. But I wasn't, my sticker box behind me looks real classy, doesn't it? Um, it's not even the box, it's just the cover. But I wasn't, um, I wasn't in love with the third one. By the time I got to the third one, I felt like they were reaching and rushing. Um, I feel like, and I don't know anything about the actual creation of this, this book series or this trilogy, but I felt very much in reading it like this author had a really fantastic idea and then needed to hit writing deadlines for the last second too, um, which is sad. I mean, it was still good. I'm still really glad I read it. I still absolutely would hand it to any middle grade fiction reader. Um, loved it. So I read that. Uh, I'm still working on the Gilmore Girls reading list. I have a goal in 2021 to read at least 10 books off that reading list over the course of the year. And I read, so I read Emma, uh, Jane Austen. It was very sweet. I mean, it's Jane Austen. You can't go wrong with Jane Austen. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really fluffy conversations. I'm always intrigued by it. I just, I just started watching The Gilded Age too. And I always, I always am kind of a sucker for these absolutely meaningless conversations that happen in these overly privileged families like they think this stuff matters but it doesn't and what caught me about Emma and uh what I liked about it was that the conversations were so fluffy and meaningless and our world is really really not fluffy and meaningless so having something fluffy and meaningless to listen to was great I like that's what I wanted I was I actually did that one mostly as an audiobook I read a few chapters I had an ebook of it too so there were a few chapters I read but mostly it was an audiobook and I loved just how fluffy and meaningless the conversations were, except for when they started talking about plague. There was a couple of, there were a couple of chapters there that they were talking about like a flu that was going through. And I was like, e I was working on cleaning a room upstairs while I was listening to one chapter in particular. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is too much in a pandemic, but it was good. I liked it. Um, I finished reading The Sinister Mystery of the Mesmerizing Girl by Theodora Goss, which I started in December. I finished reading that in January. That's the third in the Athena Club series, The Extraordinary Adventures of the Athena Club, I think it's called. Um, fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, that series, it starts with uh, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. Um, Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Highly suggest this series. So The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, um, we're, we're, as you go through this trilogy, you meet different women who were impacted by various men from science fiction, essentially. Um, 
women, some of like, for instance, Dr. Jekyll's daughter, uh, a woman who's a victim of Dr. Moreau, um, Frankenstein's bride? Brain freeze. I think that's who she is. The wife of Frankenstein? The wife of Frankenstein's monster. That's what she is. She's another monster created by Dr. Frankenstein. Um, so there's like, why are these guys doctors? So there's like, all these women, essentially it's like, what happens when all these women who are impacted by various men in science fiction come together and solve mysteries? Honestly, I could read more. I could read hundreds of books on this with these characters. There's this really interesting thing that happens in that series where her her main character or her, her character who's writing the series um, gets interrupted by the other characters while she's writing. It's this really fascinating way that she kind of breaks the fourth wall without pulling you out of the story, which I love. I like any time, I like breaking the fourth wall. I think it's fascinating when done well. Um, and she does it really interestingly in this series. So highly, highly, oh my gosh, it was so good. Honestly, five stars to all, all three books, all three books. And then alongside that, um, I started reading Hex Life, which I'll talk about on the February wrap up because I didn't finish it until February. Um, but the same author, Theodore Goss, wrote a short story in that that I will talk about in the next video. Uh, and then I also read um, The London House by Catherine, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, Ray, Ray, could be. Uh, the London House. I didn't know what to expect with this. 100% I downloaded the audiobook based on the cover art. That's it. Like that was my whole reason. Um, the cover art is, I mean, it's called The London House and the cover art is this woman walking up these stairs. I'll put the picture up, but yeah, 100%. I, I downloaded the audiobook based on the cover art. It's a beautiful cover and I was not disappointed. Uh, the London House, the basic premise of it, or the, the summary, I guess, of it. Um, this woman was named after a great aunt. A great, great aunt or a great aunt. Oh, hello, Wabus. Um, this woman was named after an aunt who she had always been told had died when in childhood. And a friend of hers comes to her. He'd been doing some research and he had learned that the aunt may not have actually died in childhood. She may have actually been a Nazi. She she defected from the British army and became a Nazi and was then shunned by the family. And they made up this story that she died in childhood. And the, the book is basically her, this, this woman, trying to learn the true story of her aunt through letters, diaries, and genealogical research. It's like... It's like an Ancestry.com mystery with a little bit of romance. Loved it. I absolutely loved it. I mean, I, I'm i not afraid to give up a book if I'm not into it. So if I finish a book, I probably did love it. Um, but I really loved this book. Really loved this book. May reread this book, actually. Couldn't stop listening to it. It was an audio book. Um, couldn't stop listening to it. So I had The Sinister Mystery of the, Mes of the Mesmerizing Girl. That one I read on paper. Um, the Deceivers was an audiobook. The Messengers was a paper book. Emma was a mix of an audiobook and an ebook. And then I also read in January or reread uh, We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamandi Nagochi Adichie. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Um, we Should All Be Feminists. That's a quick read. It took me 25 minutes one morning before breakfast to reread it. Highly suggest. It's like the extended version of a TED Talk that she gave once. Um, honestly, if I could buy hundreds of copies of this book. I would just leave it on park benches everywhere. Everyone should read. Everyone should read Chimamanda. Chimamanda? Chimamanda. Um, so I reread that in January. So that's all the things I read in January. What did I knit? Hats. Um, I'm still working on the orange socks. This is where I'm at on those. I have not gotten very far on them because I kind of got on a hat kick in January and it was a Helix hats. I started looking through my scrap yarns, realized I had a lot of tiny little balls of scrap yarns and I made hats and more hats and more hats. And I don't even know if I took photos of all the hats that I made, but I'll put some up like hats, Helix hats. I just kept making Helix hats. Um, I think I made like a dozen hats in January and that's what I knit in the month of January. 
I didn't work on anything long term. I started a green again, again, started a green cardigan with the um, Lamb's Pride worsted that I have. And again, I frogged it. I think I've started six times that sweater and frogged it all six times. I'm just not happy with any patterns that I find. I feel like I, if I had one more skein of yarn, I'd feel more confident going into like maybe the Weekender or um, what's that one? I don't know. I feel like I'd be more confident going into a sweater. I feel like I'm not going to have enough yarn to do a long enough sweater and I really like long sweaters. So I keep on so I keep on starting a sweater and then not finishing it. So yeah, I just knit hats. I started a shawl, which I'll talk about on the February wrap up because I just finished it two days ago and we're about halfway into February. Um, and I'm a little late on this update. So Helix hats, that's all I knit in, in January. That's it. Um, why am I late doing this update? So I wanna start doing a monthly wrap up of everything I knit and read in a month. Um, but I'm a little late this month because my spouse had surgery on February 1st, which of course, like surgery recovery took over the first two weeks of February. Um, so we're now to February 20th. I'm just now wrapping up what I did in January. So yeah, that's how that's going to work. Um, uh, but I do want to start doing like a regular monthly wrap up and I hope to be more consistent. My studio upstairs, which I kind of started showing in some videos recently, um, is still in progress. I is still in progress. I'm a little bit behind on where I wanted to be in getting everything ready up there because of the surgery. Um, but they're recovering nicely. So I should be back up there and actually putting together my studio and be able to record up there pretty soon, which is really exciting. And I've been doing a lot of sourdough, doing a lot of baking doing a lot of cooking from scratch. I kind of want to start talking maybe more about that too. Um, more videos and more of, on that topic, but that's it for now, I think. Um, yeah, so if you made it this far, thanks for watching my video. Glad you could join me, subscribe and stuff. Um, I kind of, now that we're past this surgery and we're past the moving downstairs process and we are actually like back to an almost normal life, although we still don't have a bathroom. We have one, we have a little bathroom over there. Um, our regular, our actual full bath is halfway through a remodel that we didn't know we were going to need thanks to a mold issue. Um, but we're, we're almost like I can smell the paint fumes. It's the walls are being painted. Progress is to be had. Um, now that we're, we're back to that, level um that life is kind of calming back down and i'm hoping to get back into regular recording regular vlogging and sharing more of my stuff with you all i came to the conclusion a couple months back and i know i talked about this in another video and probably on the podcast too but i came to the conclusion a few months back that really what i want to do with my life what i what i enjoy enjoy most is encouraging others to create. I like to create. I like to encourage others to create. And I hope to do more of that in the upcoming months. Um, have a good day. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, let's, let's go craft and create. <laughs>